thereof thought fit not to bestow upon the sacrifice, because it was not convenient, but to be reserved for other charges, for other things that they could do with that money. This money then, in regard of the sender, was appointed to Hercules' sacrifice. See that? Sacrificing to Hercules. Greek God. But became of the bearers thereof. It was employed to the making of galleys. Look at uh, jump up to verse 59. No, I want to uh, select you. Um, jump up to verse uh, 2nd well, look at uh, 2 Maccabees 5 and 1. About the same time Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt, and then it happened that through all the city for the space about of 40 days, through all the city, he gonna go into Egypt, Antiochus, wicked king Antiochus, making his second journey into Egypt. And then it happened that through all the city for the space of about almost of 40 days, there were seen horsemen running in the air in cloth of gold and armed with lances like a band of soldiers seeing holograms, you know, apparitions of this in the sky for 40 days. Can you imagine this? And troops of horsemen in array encountering and running one against another with shaking of shields and multitude of spikes and drawing of swords and casting of darts and glittering of golden ornaments and harness of all sorts. Wherefore every man prayed that that apparition might turn to good. Can you imagine that? Now when there was gone forth a false rumor as though Antiochus had been dead, Jason took at the least a thousand men and suddenly made an assault upon the city. And they that were upon the walls being put back, and the city at length taken, and Menelaus fled into the castle. But Jason slew his own citizens without mercy. Hear that? Jason slew his own citizens without mercy, not considering that to get the day of them of his own nation would be a most unhappy day for him. But thinking they had been his enemies and not his countrymen whom he conquered. Howbeit for all this he obtained not the principality, but at the last received shame for the reward of his treason and fled again into the country of the Ammonites, ran among the Japanese. In the end, therefore, he had an unhappy return, being accused before Aretas, the king of the Arabians, fleeing from city to city, he had to flee from city to city at this point, pursued of all men, everybody after him now, hated as a forsaker of the laws, and being had an abomination as an open enemy of his country and countrymen, he was cast out into Egypt. Thus he that had driven many out of their country, Paris, in a strange land, retiring to the Lacedaemonians and thinking there to find secure or se safety by reason of his kindred. And he that had cast out many unburied had none to mourn for him, nor any solemn funerals at all nor sepulchre with his fathers. Let's see. Then here we go with Antiochus destroying Jerusalem. Now when this that was done came to the king's ear, he thought that Judea had revolted. He thought we had revolted. 
Whereupon, move, removing out of the Egypt in a furious mind, he took the city by force of arms and commanded his men of war not to spare such as they met and to slay such as went up upon the houses, kill everybody. He gave a decree out to kill all of us, Israelites. Thus there was killing of young and old, making a way of men, women, and children, slain of virgins and infants, killing everybody. And there were destroyed within the space of three whole days, fourscore thousand, that's 80,000, whereof 40,000 were slain in the conflict, in the war, and no fewer sold than slain. Sold into slavery. Yet was he not content with this. He wasn't content with killing 80,000 of us. But presumed to go into the most holy temple of all the world. Many of us that traitor to the laws and to his own country being his guide. It's over there. Wicked Israel right, showing them where the temple was. And taking the holy vessels with polluted hands. And with profane hands, pulling down the things that were dedicated by other kings to the augmentation and glory and honor of the place, he gave them away. What does it say? And taking the holy vessels with polluted hands, say his hands are polluted, and with profane hands, pulling down the things that were dedicated by other kings to the augmentation and glory and honor of the place. He gave them away. Gave them away, like it says. Profane hands, right? Go to Hebrews. Who's profane? The Bible says. Go to the book of Hebrews. The 13th chapter. No, the 12th chapter and the 16th verse. Hebrews 12, 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one more so of meat sold his birthright. See? Profane person as Esau. For one more so of meat sold his birthright. And that meat was red, that red pottage, that red meat. So then you know it's still, I mean, it's all going together. Angel's Epiphanies, profane hands went into the temple and took all our holy vessels and so forth out. Verse 17. 2 Maccabees 5, 17. And so haunting was Antiochus in mind that he considered not that the most high was angry for a while for the sins of them that dwelt in the city. And therefore his eye was not upon the place. For that they, for had they not been formerly wrapped in many sins, this man, as soon as he had come, had forthwith been scorched and put back from his presumption as Heliodorus was, whom Seleucus the king sent to view the treasury. Nevertheless, the most I did not choose the people for the place's sake, but the place for the people's sake. He didn't choose the, uh, the people for the place's sake, but the place for the people's sake. And therefore the place itself that was partaken with them of the adversity that happened to the nation did afterward communicate in the benefits sent from the most high. And as it was forsaken in the wrath of the Almighty, so again, the great Almighty, the great Most High, being reconciled, it was set up with all glory. So when Antiochus had carried out of the temple a thousand and eight hundred talents, he departed in all haste unto Antiochia. Took all those things out of our temple. Weaning in his pride to make the land navigable and the sea passable by foot such was the haughtiness of his mind the pridefulness that he rolled in 
and he left governors to vex the nation. He left governors in our land to vex us. To vex the nation at Jerusalem. Philip, for his country, uh, Phrygian, and for manners more barbarous than he just he just set him there. So he was more wicked than Antiochus. And at Garrison, Jonas, and besides Menelaus, who worse than all the rest bear a heavy hand over the citizens, over the Israelites, having a malicious mind against his countrymen, the Jews. Hear that? A malicious mind against his countrymen, the Jews. Bunch of sambos. Worse than the enemy. Our people. He said also that detestable ringleader Apollonius with an army of two and twenty thousand commanded him to slay, to kill all those that were in their best age and to sell the women and the younger sort. Sell the women and children. Kill the young men who come into Jerusalem and pretending peace you come for peace it's all about peace brother did forbear till the holy day of the sabbath to the sabbath came when taking the jews keeping holy day he commanded his men to arm themselves and so he slew all them that were gone to the celebration of the sabbath and running through the city with weapons slew great multitudes of Israelites. But Judas Maccabeus with nine others or thereabout withdrew himself into the wilderness and lived in the mountains after the manner of beasts with his company who fed on herbs continually lest they should be partakers of the pollutions. Man, it's cold. That's what we had to deal with. In the Greek Empire. Uh, Second Maccabees 8, the eighth chapter. And verse 21. Thus, when he had made them bold with these words and ready to die for the laws and the country, he divided his army into four parts <coughs> and joined with himself his own brethren, leaders of each band, to wit Simon and Joseph and Jonathan, giving each one 1,500 men. And he appointed Eleazar to read the holy book and when he had given him his watch watchword, the help of the Most High himself leading the first band, he joined battle with Nicanor. And, you know, it's a day that we're supposed to be honoring and getting the victory, victory over him. The day of Nicanor. That we say we was going to honor. And, you know, us getting, our, getting the victory. Day of Simon. Day of Nicanor. See, all this is talking about our victories and our in the in the, the heinous crimes and torments and torture and the things that we went through as a people before Mashaqab Shai came on the earth. You hear what it's saying, so Naturally, they want to take it out because it's pretty self-explanatory. You can read it for yourself. I mean, they should do a movie on this, man. This is real. This be made a movie. The real deal, you know what I mean? Without it being watered down. It's the whole script is right here in the Apocrypha.
fighting, fight up, fighting up, fight up the fight up the fight, you know? Um. Look at, uh, huh, this is a good one. Second Maccabees, the eighth chapter. Second, Second Maccabees 8 and 32. Then slew also Philanches, that wicked person who was with Timotheus and had annoyed the Jews many ways, bothering us. Furthermore, at such time as they kept the feast for the victory in their country, they burnt Celestines that had set fire upon the holy gates. Who had fled into a little house, and so he received a reward meet for his wickedness. They burn him up. As for that most ungracious Nicanor, who had brought a thousand merchants to buy the Jews, he was through the help of the Most High brought down by them, of whom he made less, excuse me, least account. And putting off his glorious apparel and discharging his company, he came like a fugitive servant through the midland unto Antioch, having very great dishonor for that his host was destroyed, his, his army was destroyed. Thus he that took upon him to make good to the Romans their tribute by means of the captives in Jerusalem, Told abroad that the Jews had the most high to fight for them. Hear that? Told abroad that the Jews had the most high to fight for them. And therefore they could not be hurt. Read it again. He told of the captives in Jerusalem. Told abroad that the Jews had the most high to fight for them. And therefore they could not be hurt. Because they followed the laws of that he gave them. Read it again. That the Jews had the most high to fight for them. And therefore they could not be hurt. Why? Because they followed the laws that he gave them. Read it one more time. And therefore they could not, excuse me, that the Jews had the most high to fight for them. But therefore they could not be hurt because they followed the laws that he gave them. The most I told us. Deuteronomy 28 and 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass any time in the future if thou shalt hearken listen diligently unto the voice of the Most High of thy power to observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Most High of thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's why they're saying that we kept the laws of the Most High and the Most High fought for us. And you cannot, they cannot hurt us. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken, listen to the voice of the Most High, thy power, our power. So it is above all nations. That's why no hurt came to us because we kept the laws of the Most High. 
as it is written. Hello, y'all. Sure. Second Maccabees 11 chapter. Because we're looking at the most highest laws all in the, the apocalypse. Look at, uh, no, look at, uh, yes, Second Maccabees 11 chapter, uh, verse 24. We understand also that the Jews would not consent to our father for to be brought under the custom of the Gentiles, but had rather keep their own manner of living, which is keeping the laws of the Most High, for the which cause they require of us, that we should suffer them to live after their own laws. You know? We told them we want to live after our own laws. Wherefore our mind is that this nation shall be in rest, and we have determined to restore them their temple, that they may live according to the customs of their forefathers. Thou shalt do well, therefore, to send unto them and grant them peace, that when they are certified of our mind, they may be of good comfort and ever go cheerfully about their own affairs, keeping the laws of the Most High. And a letter of the king unto the nation of the Jews was after this matter. King Antiochus sendeth greetings unto the consul and the rest of the Jews. If, if ye fare well, ye have our desire. We are also in good health. Many of us declared unto us that your desire was to return home and to follow your own business, which is our own laws. You couldn't say that, but that's, that's our business. Keep the laws of the Most High. Wherefore, they that will depart shall have safe conduct till the 30th day of, whatever that is, with security. And the Jews shall use their own kind of meats and laws as before. And none of them, any matter of ways, shall be molested for things ignorantly done. I mean, they could eat the clean meats and don't have to eat no swine fresh and abomination. I have sent also Menelaus that he may comfort you. Fare ye well in the 148th year and the 15th day of the month. That's like, it seemed like it's named after him, Antichrist. The Romans also sent unto them a letter containing these words. Quintus Minimus and Titus Malleus, ambassadors of the Romans, send greetings unto the people of the Jews. Whatsoever Lycia, the king's cousin, hath granted, therewith we also are well pleased. But touching such things as he judged to be referred to the king, after ye have advised thereof, send one forthwith, that we may declare as it is convenient for you. For we are now going to Antioch. Therefore send some with speed, that we may know what is your mind. We know what's on your mind. Farewell. This hundred and eighth and fortieth year, the fifteenth day of the month. Antichrist. So... You see, we deal with the Greeks and the Romans coming coming into power. At least they they're there, the Greeks and the Romans. We know eventually the Romans was a super part of Earth. Um, Look at um, uh, 
Look at um, 2 Maccabees 12. Verse 1. When these covenants were made, Lysias went in, unto the king, and the Jews were about their husbandry, husbandry, which means farming. But of the governors of several places, Timotheus and Ap 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 Apollonus, and the son of Genus, also Hieronymus and the most fun, and beside them Nicanor, the governor of Cyprus, would not suffer them to be quiet and live in peace. Would allow us to be quiet and live in peace. Wicked suckers coming against us. The men of Joppe also did such an unrighteous deed. They prayed the Jews that dwelt among them to go with their wives and children into the boats which they had prepared as though they had meant them no hurt. Say, take your wives and your children to these boats as if they prepared, they had prepared as if they wasn't going to do anything to them to hurt them. Who accepted of it according to the common decree of the city as being desirous to live in peace and suspecting nothing. They weren't suspecting anything. But when they were gone forth into the deep, they drowned no less than 200 of them. Got them out there in the water and drowned them. No less than 200 of them. When Judas heard of this cruelty done unto his countrymen, he commanded those that were with him to make them ready. You gotta understand. Ezekiel 35 and 5. Ezekiel 35 and 5. This is the way they feel. Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, a perpetual hatred, and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, therefore as I live, said the Most High Power. That's what they did, and still do it. I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus say the Most High. 2 Maccabees 12 and 5. When Judas heard of this cruelty, I mean, come on. Like they did the Moors. They, they ruled Spain. They had their ships. They said, hey, they burned them up. Came to the house and said, go to your ships. They was burned up. When they came back, they killed them. They burned down their houses and killed them. Put their heads on poles and so forth. Second Maccabees be 12 and 5. When Judas heard of this cruelty done unto his countrymen, he commanded those that were with him to make them ready, get ready for war. And calling upon the Most High, the righteous judge, calling upon the Most High, crying to the Most High, the righteous judge, he came against those murderers of his brethren and burnt the haven by night and set the boats on fire. And those that fled, thither he slew. And when the town was shut up, he went backwards as if he would return to root out all them of the city of Joppa. But when he heard that the Jamanites were minded to do in like manner unto the Jews that dwell among them, he came upon the Jamites, Jamnites also by night and set fire on the haven and the navy so that the light of the fire was seen at Jerusalem 240 furloughs off. Now when they were gone from thence nine furloughs in their journey toward Timotheus no fewer than 5,000 men on foot and 500 horsemen on, of the Arabians set upon him. 500 horsemen of the Arabians set upon him. These Arabs. Whereupon there was a very sore battle, but Judah's side, by the help of the Most High, got the victory. So that the nomads of Arabia, being overcome, besought Judas for peace. 
promising both to give him cattle and to pleasure him otherwise. Then Judas, thinking indeed that they would be profitable in many things, granted them peace, whereupon they shook hands, and so they departed to their tents. Shook hands and departed to their tents. He went also at, about to make a bridge to a certain strong city, which was fenced about with walls and inhabited by people of diverse countries, and the name of it was Jas Caspis. But they that were within it put such trust in the strength of the walls and provision of victuals, the food that they had, that they behaved themselves rudely toward them that were with Judas, railing and blaspheming and uttering such words as were not to be spoken. Wherefore Judas was his company, calling upon the great most high power of the world, who without any rams or engines of war did cast down Jericho in the time of Joshua, gave a fierce assault against the walls. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down. And they blew the trumpets. It came tumbling down. It's, but you see how he's resulting back to the Most High, back to the Most High, back to the Most High, and took the city by the will of the Most High and made unspeakable slaughters insomuch that a lake Two furloughs broad, near adjoining thereunto, being filled full, was seen running with blood. Then departed they from thence seven hundred and fifty furloughs, and came to Charaka, unto the Jews that are called Tubiani. But as for Timotheus, they found him not in the places. For before he had dispatched anything, he departed from thence, having left a very strong garrison in a certain hole. Howbeit, Dosotilius, the Sosipater, who were of Maccabeus' captains, went forth and slew those that Timotheus had left in the fortress. Above 10,000 men, they killed 10,000 men. Above 10,000 men, more than 10,000 men. And Maccabeus ranged his army by bands and set them over the bands and went against Timotheus who had about who had about him 120,000 men on foot and 2,500 horsemen. This is all our history, y'all. This is all our story. Now when Timotheus had knowledge of Judas coming, he sent the women and children and the other baggage unto a fortress called Carnian, for the town was hard to besiege and un uneasy to come unto by reason of the straightness of all the places. But when Judas, his first band, came in sight, the enemies, being spitten with fear and terror through the appearing of him that seeth all things, fled a, fled a mean, talking about see, who is that see all things, the most high, see all things, fled a man. One running this way and another that way. They running this way and that way. Away from them. So as that they were often hurt of their own men and wounded with the points of their own swords. Wow, Judas also was very earnest in pursuing them, killing those wicked wretches of whom he slew about 30,000 men. Moreover, Timotheus himself fell into the hands of Dulcidius and Sosipater, whom he besought with much craft to let him go with his life, because he had many of the Jews' parents and the brethren of some of them, who, if they put him to death, should not be regarded. So when he had assured them with many words that he would restore them without hurt, according to the agreement, they let him go for the saving of their brethren. Then Maccabeus, and that's like him bargaining, a ransom for his life. So when he had assured them with many words that he would restore them without hurt, according to the agreement, they let him go for the saving of their brethren. Then Maccabeus marched forth to Carnium 
and to the temple of Artagatus. And there he slew five and twenty thousand persons. And after he had put to flight and destroyed them, Judas removed the host toward Ephron, a strong city, wherein Lysias abode and a great multitude of diverse nations and the strong young men kept the walls and defended them mightily, wherein also was great provision of engines and darts. But when Judas and his company had called upon almighty power, the most high hour, by Shabbat Mashiach Yahweh who with his power breaking the strength of his enemies, they won the city and slew 20 and 5,000 of them that were Within, I mean, if you add up all these numbers, it's adding up. From thence they departed to Sintopolis, which lies 600 furloughs from Jerusalem. But when the Jews that dwelt there had testified that the Sintopolitans, what is it, uh, Sintopolitans dealt lovely with them and it treated them kindly in the time of their adversity. They treated us all right. They gave them thanks, designed them to be friendly still unto them. And so they came to Jerusalem, the Feast of the Weeks approaching. Feast of Weeks approaching. As we got to have the Feast of Weeks approaching us. I think it's on the 27th of this month. And after the feast, called Pentecost, see? Same one that we read about in Acts the second chapter. After the feast called Pentecost, they went forth against Georgia, the governor of Idumea. Idumea is Edom Rome, represents the Edomites, so-called Caucasians, who came out with 3,000 men on foot and 400 horsemen, and it happened that in their fighting together, a few of the Jews were slain. At this time, Dostias, one of Basenor's company, who was on horseback and a strong man was still upon Georgia and taking hold of his coat drew him by force and when he would have taken the, that cursed man alive a horseman of Tracia coming upon him smote off his shoulder and he, he hit him with the sword cut off his shoulder so that Georgia fled unto Marcia now when they that were with Georgia had fought long and were weary, Judas called upon the Most High that he would show himself to be their helper and leader of the battle. And with that he began his own language and sung him songs and with a loud voice and rushing of unawares upon Georgia's men he put them to flight. So Judas gathered his host and came into the city of Odalam. And when the seventh day came, they purified themselves as the custom was and kept the Sabbath in the same place. Beautiful. So as they look at uh second back of beast thirteen. Verse 12. So when they had all done this together and besought the merciful Most High with weeping and fasting, crying to the Most High with weeping and fasting, and lying flat upon the ground three days long, Judas having exhorted them, commanded they should be in readiness, being in readiness, ready to go to battle. And Judas, being apart with the elders, determined before the king's hosts, should enter into Judea and get the city to go forth and try the matter and fight 
by the help of the Most High. So when he had committed all to the creator of the world, the Most High, and exhorted his soldiers to fight manfully, even unto death, for the laws, hear that? For the laws, the temple, the city, the country, the commonwealth, he camped by Moldrin, Molten, and having given the watch, watchword to them that were about him, victory is of the Most High. With the most valiant and choice young men, he went in into the king's tent by night and slew in the camp about 4,000 men and the chiefest of the elephants with all that were upon him. Killed 4,000 men and, and took the best elephants. And at last they filled the camp with fear and turmoil and departed with good success. This was done in the break of the day because the protection of the Most High did help him. Hallelujah. See, that's his our story. So, look at uh, Song of Three Holy Children, verse 9. Song of Three Holy Children, verse 9. In the Apocrypha. Song of Three Holy Children, verse 9. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of the Most High, and to an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the land. Hear that? The most wicked in all the land. And now, we cannot open our mouths, we are become a shame and reproach to thy servants and to them that worship thee. Yet deliver us not up holy for thy name's sake, neither disannul thou thy covenant. This is with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the 12 tribes of Israel. Say for his name, say we say this a lot because our name, Yasharallah, Mosai's name is in our name, Yah. And cause not thy mercy to depart from us. Mosai say you have mercy on Jacob. Only one that he say you have mercy on is us, the children of Israel. For thy beloved Abraham's sake, for thy servant Isaac's sake, and for thy holy Israel's sake, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom thou hast spoken and pro promised that thou wouldest multiply their seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that lieth upon the seashore. For we, O Most High, are become less than any nation, and be kept under this day in all the world because of our sins, because we transgress the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High while we scattered among these nations. Neither is there at this time prince or prophet or leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense or place of sacrifice before thee and to find mercy. Nevertheless, in a contrite heart and in a humble spirit, let us be accepted. Hear that? Nevertheless, in a contrite heart, contrite mind, and in humble spirit, let us be accepted. Yeah. It's cold, boy. They burning, they, 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 they put in the fire. Burning in the fire.